But if to answer your question, Paul, if I were to, it's funny because at episode 200, I actually rebranded my podcast and it's no longer called the Merged Marketing Podcast. It's called Drop the Mic, which was also the title of the book I released in 2022. And with the change in direction was the change in format. I realized that through the podcast episodes, I was, a lot of guests were attracted to me and used my podcast as an outlet to promote their own frameworks, to promote their own businesses. So it almost became like a 25 minute sales pitch for that guest, which is great for the conversation I might be having or for their business benefit and for the content, but not so great for the listener base, right? Listener base does not want to listen to a 25 minute sales pitch, right? So at episode 200, I, I flipped the script and I said, hey, I'm more interested in the actual stories of how marketers came to success. I've had the pleasure of speaking on stages around the globe. I MC conferences in Europe. And so through those experiences, I was able to rub shoulders with a lot of prominent speakers in the marketing space. So through that, I used that outlet as an opportunity to have these guests on my podcast to talk about their experiences. And so instead of being more reactive to the PR agencies requesting guests to be on my show, I'm more doing outreach to the people that I really want to have on my podcast. And I think that's the big difference now is having genuine conversations with people and as opposed to having a guest that's just interested in the sales pitch, to be totally honest and transparent. And I think that's where you get the, the best engagement from the audience as well, is that everybody loves a story. Everybody loves bad guys and good guys and the challenges along the way. And it's, but it's really hard to shape that on the fly sometimes. I guess if you're a small business owner, you've got a, a million other things to think about. Not everybody's a great podcast host, certainly from day one. And I think my, the thing I'll throw into that is treat it as a learning process. Your, your first podcasts are going to be average at best and you will learn tips and tricks and you'll speak to people who run their own podcast and you'll learn things from them but the important thing is eventually you will be able to identify how to go about it easily you'll become much more confident at speaking and and, and extracting the stories i think as well fair yeah 100 percent. the way and look we have the likes of ai and chat gpt and your own actual customized gpts they have tons of them just type in podcast and explore gpts and you'll see all the podcast GPTs that are out there to help you create a format for your podcast, help you create a, you know, a script or questions to ask for your podcast. I will preface that by saying, if you're going to ask GPT to give you a list of questions to ask a podcast guest, make sure you prompt it by saying, give me unique questions that podcast guest has never been asked before, right? Because that's one thing you don't want to have is the same question asked to the same podcast guest time and time again. It just, you can tell it's been scripted or that you can tell it's been said a million times before. And this is what creates really good conversations. For me, when I do my podcast, I have a list of questions sitting there, ready to go, in case I have a podcast guest that is not that conversational, it's like pulling teeth, I might need to resort to that. But nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a conversation like I'm sitting at a bar with, a, with, with somebody I just met and just going off of that conversation, going off of the responses that they're saying and building questions off of that. I think this is the type of podcast most people want to listen to, that Joe Rogan-esque type of podcast episode, right? Yeah. I think it's, it's also a little bit about not being afraid to be polarizing to an extent. You've got, everybody's got their own opinions and we, we live in this world where lots of us who are, who are doing these, who are building their own businesses, who are small business entrepreneurs, You've come from that corporate background where you weren't allowed to have a freaking opinion. Newsflash, it's your business now. You can have an opinion mm -hmm. and you're not going to scare away all your customers because what you're going to do is there's been polarizing and there's been polarizing on purpose. People can tell the difference. It's, as long as it's genuine and authentic, then you can get away with it. But all you're going to do is pull the right people towards you and push the people away who aren't a good fit. So, and that's for me is the beauty of a podcast is I can now share my opinions. I didn't dare have 10 years ago. That's not, can that be true? Is that realistic? And I think that's probably something that you've called through as well, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I love the fact that you bring up push and pull, right? Because push and pull is important. You're going to attract a certain type of fish and you're going to retract a certain type of fish, right? You're going to push those away. And this is mirrored. It's parallel with the way we run advertising, the way we run ads on, on meta. It's like, we're constantly creating ads to push and pull people away. We don't want the people, we don't want people to opt into a lead magnet if they're not 
inevitably going to be a client of our clients, you know what I mean? Or for ourselves. And same with the podcast episode. This entire podcast episode is essentially a lead magnet to attract a certain person to you, somebody that knows, likes, and trusts you and wants to work with you. And it's a great, I guess you can call it a great lure for that objective.